hi guys, how's everybody? How's everybody? My name is Freddy. I'm the editor in chief of IGN Southeast Asia. Um, like real life relationship, I like interaction as well. So if you do like to ask questions in between my points, do do so. We can interact. It's fine. Okay, but today we're gonna talk a lot about video games, like games and the secrets of making great game with good review scores to some extent. I'll be speaking from the point of view of a journalist, of a game reviewer, uh, of what are the points that we look at. So before we start, just a quick question. Who here doesn't play video games at all? Who here does not, um, does not regard yourself as a gamer? Please raise your hand. Oh, cool. We have one there. And you, madam, you are important. Seriously, because when you, if you're not a video game, uh, if you're not a gamer and you're here, you're very valuable to us because to journalists, to developers, you are a rare kind. We want your feedback. We want your opinion. We want everything. You are great in testing. So yeah, amazing. I'm not saying that you're a guinea pig in the way you are, but yeah, you will be great in this discussion, this session that we have here. So now, before I continue, what do you think constitute to a game review score? This is a quick, quick show of hands. What, what, what do you think? What do you think constitute to review scores? Any, any, anything? Like Interaction? Bugs. Sorry? Like yes. We don't want a game with bugs. That's good. What else? Gameplay. gameplay yes, gameplay. Graphic. I hear that. Uh, innovative, innovation. Innovation. Something, innovation. Something special. Something we never see before. Yeah, cool. Yes. What else? What else? Any other things? Engagement, yes. We don't want boring games, yes. What else? No microtransactions. That's very important too, but for some games, we must have it. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's still a very good point. What else? Huh? Huh? No pay to win. No pay to win. That is very important as well. What else? Huh? Uh, I hear some, something there. Sorry? Okay, no ads, yeah, same, okay, that's cool as well, no ads. All right, all these are things that we can consider and we must consider when we review something to, to a certain extent. So now, quickly, um, to me, games needs to be games first. First and foremost, a game needs to be enjoyed because if you, cr you create and you develop a game and if we can see the intention that that's not exactly for someone to enjoy, then it may not be that great. Some people will, okay, all right, it's grindy. Yeah, I'll play for five hours, 50. But if I play 50 hours, like the, the, the gentleman say, you know, pay to win, but I will lose to someone who just played five minutes because he paid 500 bucks just to be strong, then what's the point? It's not fun. It's not enjoyable. So that's really important. So, but who am I and why am I here? So just a quick one. I'm a gamer, like most of you, except that madam there. I like RPG, I like TCG, I like trading card game, I like first person shooter, PC, PS4, mainly a PC and PS4 players, but I play almost everything. And I'm an editor, writer, reviewer, blah, blah. I also do theater. I'm a director, writer, and performer. So if you would like to talk about arts, we can talk about it after the talk. And how exactly do we do a game review is also something that I will talk about it right now. So what drives a review score? I know we, we already did a quick check earlier, but I want to ask, does it really matter? Does a review score really matter to your game? Yes? No? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, a quick answer is yes, it is. It's really important. Because, yeah, you may think that, yeah, some review site or whatever may not be credible, blah, 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 a lot of things to consider, but it will somehow affect your sales, your conversion, your everything. Yeah, whether you will get more investment. But some games, to a certain extent, some company may not have the model to straight away launch everything they want to do. So sometimes they need funds to continue to, to develop the game. Sometimes, you know, they have, there's the reason why they will launch a beta, they launch something else, they launch early, early access to try to get investors. So sometimes by getting early uh, access review or preview to a certain extent, will help you in that sense. So you want to make sure that you, of course, every game, every game developers want their games to be reviewed highly, right? So, let's, what drives a review score? Quick one. Gameplay is key amongst a broad range of other aspects, yes? Because when we talk about game, if the, if the control and everything is like, you know, clunky, you can't really move around, what's the point? So gameplay is definitely key, followed by narrative. Because, but why I say narrative, in games, it's always tricky because it's kind of subjective. Just like how we tell stories. 
same story but told from your father and your, mom, your mom's point of view could be completely different. So it, it will drive the score differently as well. Sometimes that is the, one of the key reasons why different game review sites will have very, very big different scores. But that's also just a, a, a one of the small spectrum. And core mechanics rather than fluffs. Sometimes, yes, we do look into all the added features and stuff like that, but what most, what's more, most important is the fundamental mechanics. If it doesn't work, sorry. Whatever added features you have may give you some brownie points, but it will not make a B-grade game to an A-grade game. That's, that's, that's definite. And of course, performance and compatibility. It needs to be com com compatible to your machine, to your hardware, to everything else. And yeah, it needs to run smoothly. If it doesn't, then what's the point? I know it's a great game, but I can't run on my PC. And you clearly said that it can be, you know, run on my PC, but it, I can't. So that's, that's the problem. So this is also very important. And of course, design and social elements, like um, you know, from uh, visual to interaction to everything else, all these are things that we consider. And lastly, value versus product. Do I want to spend money on this game? Or if it's, if it's free, why do I want to spend time on this game? Yeah, so this is really important. Because we, when we review, we also have to put ourselves in the shoes of a gamer, of a consumer. Not so, so much of this, oh, because I've reviewed 30 games, I will see it from a master, I mean, expert, probably. Not really. We have to also look into lifestyles and all those kind of things. And yeah, so we have to understand, as game developers, we also, we also have to understand how game reviewers slash gamers see or perceive their games. Okay? Now, I'll just here, a quick chart here, um, taken uh, from the source uh, EDR. Um, okay, basically, we look at this, the chart here. 31% of the category discussion in review co-ops uh, for mainly action, RPG, and shooter will be, uh, is on gameplay. And uh, followed by 14% on uh, market, uh, um, and then 13% social, 11% narrative, 9% graphics, technical, so on and so on. All these are discussion. When I talk about discussion, I meant like, what would people talk about mostly? Yeah, so people, when they, 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 they discuss on uh, like um, comments or when they talk to their friends, that's one of the main things they talk about. And market is like, you know, what are the sales like and social and stuff like that. And yeah, all these kind of follow a certain pattern that we, we mentioned about earlier. All right, we good. And discussion sentiment in reviews. So this is a little bit different than just now. Like 80% of the time, we will if when you see in comments, especially on social media and everything, most of the time, people would touch on graphic first, or the first thing that they see. It could be the, it could be the 3D modeling, it could be the design and everything, and uh, next would be the social uh, element, and then audio, gameplay, and so on. Because all these are things that we can see and hear, and also mainly sometimes we watch videos a lot more than we read now. So these are the things that we, 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 we break down. And lastly, we, we don't talk so much about technical now anymore because also some of it actually will already be included in gameplay and so on, and performance and so, uh, the other category. All right, so review scores may not truly reflect the voice of the people, it's true, but it certainly does represent the effect it may have on your game. Because how many of, you, how many of us here sometimes refer to the uh, user comments or user reviews on Steam more so than, than game sites, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do that too sometimes. I use that as a reference because sometimes we want to hear what the people say. But having said that, uh, influential, uh, uh, influ a big review site or big enough review site will still affect your sales. So you want to make sure that whatever you do, not so much just to please your gamers, but everyone, basically, and yourself. And you want to make sure that the game is enjoyable. All right, uh, just a quick one, yeah. So yeah, all these review scores on the right side, are they important? Yes, because ultimately, we want a 10 out of 10. One day, if we can just get a 10 out of 10, yeah, that'll be great. That's our goal 
as game developers, or yeah, we want that masterpiece thing, right? Now, let's talk about the secrets. The first thing that I want to tell you is forget about the competition. Not so much of like, yeah, just screw them, no, no, not really. But study, you can study and analyze your competitions, but don't conform or contrive. Don't really, okay, just because they are doing that, we will do the same thing. Oh, then we will force it into your design team. I mean, not really. Just because your competition are doing that doesn't mean it's working all the time. You must make sure that it can fit whatever you're doing and it can fit your team's uh, capability and also interest and passion. Because if it's, not, if, if it's not working to your strength, don't. But at the same time, don't overthink because we will do it for you. <laughs> it's true. Don't think so much sometimes, in the early stage at least. Let it be. And define your own targets by make sure make, you want to know who, is, who are your audience. And then all this. Because if you know what are your, who are your tar uh, target audience in terms of the game that you are, you are developing and the, your technical slash gameplay goals. Because every game that we do, we want to make sure that what are our objectives. Not so much of just sales and like, you know, performance, but also our technical and gameplay goals. How much can we improve this time? Are we trying new things? Are we just repeating the same thing? Are we making the level design better or what? Are we hiring new people and testing them or what? All these are really important. And then only lastly, of course, sales. But yeah, you have to define your own goals and don't worry too much about the competitions. You, the competition should be about yourself. Making sure that your, 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 your next game will be better than your first, uh, than your previous one, sorry. And ultimately, you are making the game for the gamers. So remember that. Now, the Game Awards 2018 just recently announced uh, Game of the Year nominees. And over here, you see five AAA titles and one indie title. You, have any one of you here played Celeste? This one, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a great game. It's an indie game. It was uh, developed, I think, I can't remember when, but it was essentially, uh, it said in, or originally, it was a, a result of a game jam. And then from there, they developed into a full title, and now it's one of the nominees for Game of the Year. And yeah, in comparison to the five other AAA games, you'll be like, okay, I don't see anything different, you know, this like, but why is it still there? Ask yourself that. Yeah. Why you achieve this? Yeah. Because ultimately, we gamers, we look for things that we want to play. Not so much we like to, but we want to play. After we play, we realize shit is good. <laughs> and we continue playing it. And if you try it, Celeste, you understand what I mean. The graphic may be like, okay, is this 1980s? But yeah, try it. And if an indie developer can be there, yeah, maybe one day you will. Think about that. And did they think about a competition? I don't know. I, w I wasn't sure, but I hope they didn't. I think so. They were just pushing for the limit. They're pushing for the gameplay, narrative, and so on. All right? And next, uh, secret number two, defining a scope and gameplay. Get back to basics for inspiration. When I say that, I, mean, I don't mean like, you know, um, when I say get back to basics, means you have to go back to the core concept, the ideas. And don't just like, oh, new things, new things, I want to try. No, think about the core. What is the main story or main objective or the main thing that you want to talk about? And start from there. It could be like, you know, just because I like teddy bears, start from there. And then talk to your team, not so much of just one person's uh, point of view. Make sure that it's a collaborative effort. And concentrate on the experience, not the feature set. Experience first. Feature set comes later, okay? And then internal audit, what can and can you not achieve right now? Because ultimately, not all studios can afford to you know, dump in millions of dollars to just, I want everything. So sometimes we have to make sure that we have enough resources for the things that we want to achieve. But having said that, it's okay to have ridiculous wish lists. It's okay. So long your timeline allows you to 
Because if, if your boss says, I want this, 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 but give me by next week, say, tell your boss, maybe not. Sorry, can we, can we think about something else? Can we, do, can we scale down? Can we do something? Can we you know, prolong the, the timeline? Think about that. Because you, like I mentioned before, you don't want to push your games or do something that you don't, don't like to do and define your own targets again. So what is the platform or what are the platforms that you are going to develop? From there, you should know what type of tech, what kind of uh, manpower and resources you need, and game genre, of course, and then the performance. Are you pushing it? Or are you just, okay, so long it's comfortable, everyone can play, that's fine. You need to know where and what you want to achieve. And of course, after, again, core mechanics. If it's a platformer, okay, what are the core mechanics? Can you jump, can you double dash, can you do this, can you do that? All those kind of things, the controls and all everything, make sure that it's the best that you can do. Polish it, test, okay? And um, the next point that I'm gonna talk about is fit the game into the place lifestyle, okay? So the first thing, of course, to ask, who are your players? Who do you wanna target? Are they, you know, youngsters, are they from where? Is it, I mean, geographical uh, uh, location also is very important, not so much of just age and gender and stuff like that, not really, but also where are they from, education level, blah, 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 and all those kind of thing. And how much time do your players have to give to the game? And how much of that time would they actually be willing to give? That's very important. Because if you are de developing a, 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 a RPG versus, let's say, a casual a puzzle game, it's very different. You have to ask yourself, do you want this puzzle game to be like, okay, I want you to spend two hours per day. That's not very realistic. Unless you are putting in incentive, I'm not sure. But you have to think about that. Do they have that much of time or do they want to invest that much time? Yeah. And then if it's an RPG or single player game, yeah, you may want them to play two, three hours per day or in one sitting. If they only, okay, can, are they only willing to play 20 minutes or 30 minutes one sitting, maybe something is wrong with your game. Something is wrong with the narrative. So yeah, think about that. How much time? And then will your players need to take a break? If they do, then yeah, make more save points. Quick save, whatever. If it does affect your core mechanics or your gameplay, think of ways. Yeah, that's why you have checkpoints, you have save points, you have different things. Think about the strategy, uh, the, the, uh, whether do you need to increase or decrease, or do you not have it at all? Some games just because they want yeah, you to feel that it's almost impossible to defeat. They don't have save points. But people like it. Players like it. They will try and die 5,000 times. But that's because it's, it fits to um, the, the, the player's lifestyle. The audience that they want, they are targeting. Yeah. So yeah, you need to know. And how will your player assess the game? Is it, you know, um, from home or through their phone, blah, blah, platform, everything? Do you need to use cloud and stuff like that? Think about that. And where will your players be when they're playing the game? Is it at home? When we talk about PC or, or console, of course, yes, it's going to be at home or somewhere, office or whatever. They're going to be stationary. But also, that will affect your, your, the way you um, design the the core mechanics in terms of duration of and everything that they will be investing. And also, if it's mobile game, then it's even more interesting. Because you want to know where they will be. Can they hold a phone with one hand, both hands, or what? Yeah. All this will sometimes affect a player to say, no, screw this, I'm not gonna play this anymore. I don't think I can play this while I'm in the train. Yeah, I can't use both hands or something like that, yeah. Think about that. And what kind of hardware, software, and internet access will be available to your players? Because let's face it, sometimes we, well, we live in Southeast Asia. Some of us in our countries, we don't have very good internet connection. So yeah, that will affect our game design as well. Do we need everything to be online? Can we afford to go partial? I don't know. Think about that, yeah. If your target audience require you to think outside the box, like, then yes, can we do something with offline? But when they want to like progress, they may have to connect and then progress. I'm not sure. Think about that. Yeah, but these are things that will uh, affect uh, a game design and how uh, it may also affect your game review score. And next, make the game make sense. 
Because we as players, we are quite picky. We want to know why things are the way it is. We want to know, like, if we die, right, we don't know why. We can't just die for no reason. Everything must have a reason. And if we win, we also need to know why. Because if we don't, then there's no point playing. I'll be like, screw this, I don't play. Because we need to understand what makes us move forward or stop us from going. So if it's not clear, if the, the, the gameplay, if the interface, everything is not clear, it will affect. Because every effect should have a clear cause. If a game is very clunky, it's very messy in terms of like communicating all this, if there's no tutorial, yeah, it will affect the, ga the, the gaming, overall gaming experience. And the objective, of the, ga the objective of the game should be clear, although the narrative can be cryptic, because sometimes we don't want the story to be like, yeah, very straightforward. I want you to guess what may, you know, I want things to be unpredictable, but I need to know what, what to do next. So sometimes you see like items will be like blinking or like there'll be some indicators. If you are stuck somewhere for 30 minutes or what, there may be something to help you. Otherwise you'll be stuck there forever. So yeah, there, think of some things to help your players as well. They must make sense, of course. And players should always know what actions are available because we, we can't spend too much time, like I mentioned earlier. Sometimes we may not have the liberty to do so. And uh, your interface, UX, map, navigation, menu, controls, all these should be as clean and as um, clear-cut as possible. All right. And next, play test. Test. Just test everything. Most video games are highly dy dynamic experiences because that means every time you play something is different. Flow of event ch changes every every game, every tick, every try. So you, each decision the players makes leads to a multiplicity of outcomes. So like, yeah, you wanna make sure that everything is accounted for. So yeah, make sure that you test almost every levels, actually not almost, you should test every levels multiple times and get different people, different kind of people to, to, to play as much as possible. And then both targeted and outliers. You just, yeah, find a madam there. <laughs> who is not a gamer, bring her, bring her friends, yeah, bring your mom, your family or whatever, let them try. But of course, do take down the data, do record, do make sure that everything is accounted for and you have it in your archive and then you can check, cross-check what works and what doesn't. And that's pretty much it for now, for today. So, yep, um, we have a few other points that we can discuss, but I'm gonna just lay it out, out then we will open up the floor for Q&A. So, um, these are some of the points that I think may, um, you know, be great to talk about. So, that um, the other aspects that may affect a uh, game review score, like price point, microtransaction, like uh, we mentioned earlier, simplicity versus complexity, art style, timing, yep. And any questions? Yes? What do you mean by timing? Okay, when do you release? Or how do you release it? Because timing, when, when you talk about review score and all those kind of things, it does, if, if everything is really complete, if you are very confident about your game, yes. Also, when we talk about uh, releasing a game, it's also the strategy of like, do you preview, us, uh, do you preview the gameplay first or not? So when you say, uh, when I say timing, do we see everything or do you clash with other games in terms of releases? It may sometimes affect some review scores. Does that make sense? It affects a review score? Uh, it may, sorry, it may affect sales but not review scores, yes. Mm. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, what would be the difference between a 9.6 out of 10 and a 10 out of 10 game? Sorry, come again. What do you think? Uh, even if, let's say, in a review, uh, like I saw one review recently from IGN, Forza Horizon mm -hmm. 4, that got a 9.6 out of 10, and so far from the review, it seemed there weren't any complaints about the game, but it was only 9.6 mm -hmm. out of 10 out of 10. Every publication, we do have a guidelines or for reviews. Yeah. And um, 
But the thing is, when we have these guidelines, it doesn't mean that we, everything is fixed. Because like I mentioned earlier, every reviewer still have their own uh, gaming experience because every game, every try you play, every attempt is dynamic. So it, it, will, uh, it will still vary from player to player slash reviewers to reviewers. So when you say um, the score in terms of difference, yes. To be honest, the, from the same publication, if you ask two, two different editors, it may actually differ as well. But when you ask me what's the difference between 9.8 to 10, that depends on the, that actually you're talking about the scoring system. So we do have uh, like a, to a certain extent, a guideline and a table and everything that we will score it. So when you say 10 out of 10, I would say uh, it actually means that it's close to flawless, if not a masterpiece to a certain extent. 9.6, 9.8, that means there will still be something that's not that great, but is close to great. That's the only thing that is, yeah, deferred at. But um, to answer, I hope that answers your questions. Do we have any other question? Yes? Do you have an example of a game that you think was too cheap? And what did you do reviewing it? Too cheap in terms of the price point. Yeah. I can't think of any title on top of my head right now, but I, I can assure you that yes, I have. I uh, can't think of any right now, but it will be reflected in the writing, and I wouldn't say that it, when, we, when we talk about price point, it will be mentioned in uh, the, the article and everything, and it's value for money and stuff, but it shouldn't, like let's say, just because it's a free game, and even if it's you know not as great as what it would be like a five or uh, uh, nine or ten or ten or ten, you still gameplay all still very important. But um, having said that, with price point in uh, uh, the discussion, it will sometimes affect uh, whether it will. Um, I, 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 I would say that it affect the the results of the. Writing rather than the score, how we present the, or how and how we how we how we tell the audience that this may worth your money or not. Yeah, but even in the guidelines, yeah, it's not. It doesn't really carry too much weight. I would have to say. Yeah. One, one more. Yes. Um, uh, I won't name names, but certain review sites have decided to do away with the numerical score. Yes. Um, from a personal point of view, I can definitely see that uh, I personally think that it's helpful to do away with the numer numerical score if, if uh, everyone is united. Yeah, if all the scores, everybody do away the scores, maybe. But the thing is, with scores in play, it, was, um, it will affect, uh, I mean, this is more from a business point of view more from publication and views point of view, because we want to see results, we want to see performance, we want to see comparison. With just, um, you know, great, okay, or recommended or not, may sometimes not give you that, that um, measurability. Yeah, you can't measure things with just words. So we still want that amount, we still want that numerical uh, represent rep representation. Um, having said that, uh, there's pros and cons to both sides of coins, I think. Yeah, because when you can score something, it gives you somewhat of a metric. And when you don't, then it's up, really up to interpretation. Yeah, so I, I, I personally can't really jump on each side, but right now, yeah, I, I, I can understand why some publications do away with that. Yeah. Yes.
Mm. I guess when you do that, back to the basic, in a sense that uh, your target audience, you're, uh, you, you are, you're doing it, you are developing it, you're designing it for students, what age and all those kind of things. And at the same time, don't forget that just because it's educational doesn't mean that it cannot be fun. It needs to be there as well because ultimately, if the gameplay is clunky, if the controls are all not there, certain things that um, um, uh, that should be there are not there, it will affect the gaming experience. So, and the thing is because, yes, you, you may, um, uh, let's say you compare an educational game, just because we want to teach something doesn't mean that it, you cannot bring in elements that are fun. But of course, sometimes we have to do away with certain things that, that, that may be sensitive, like you know, violence and stuff like that. You don't shoot and yeah, you know, blow up stuff. But we can still find ways to, to, to reach there. Yeah. I, um, because, but I feel like educational games, the key here is that do not lose the fun. Yeah. Like, I think maybe during the game testing, one of the, one of the best way is that instead of just testing it on students, bring adults in as well. Will they like it? If they also like it and they find it is still educational, maybe that's the, 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 the right mix that you want. Mm. Do you have any other question? All right. Uh, if, oh, sorry. if not, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.